ladies, legends, welcome to Hang With Bears, episode 592, I believe. Um, excited for this one, guys. We got a big day tomorrow. Uh, Noble Savage is releasing tomorrow evening at 7 p.m. on OwenBenjamin.com. Um, I don't have to tell any of you guys that. I know everybody's been looking forward to it for a while now. Um, we're going to have myself and some of the other hosts come on tonight and kind of talk about our experience and um, from from the tent that night and uh, kind of what we're excited most about and um, just kind of brainstorm and uh, have a good time tonight. So looking forward to it. Wobbly Bear says, I cannot join the live. It's taco time. Unbelievable. Not even a Tuesday. Wow. Candor Bears in the house. What's up? Let's see who we got here. Sleepy House 1 came in first. Liberty Stead Bear came in second. Good to see you, bro. Burn Bear, Wobbly Bear, Sunflower Mama. Good evening, everybody. Riverside Bear, Teddy Pal, Port Bears in the house. Mr. Wits in the house. Candor, Copper Bears here. Bear Cut. All right, guys. This is looking good. Um... Joe Gagan is requesting to join. We're going to go ahead and get old man Joe in here. Go. Hey, Bear Rides, been having a good week, guys. It's Thursday. Normally we do this on Friday night, but tomorrow's a big night for the uh, for the Bears, for Owen, for all of us. So um, we're going to do this tonight. Joe, what's going on, man? Welcome. I'm still laughing at the Jackal Bat video. How are you doing? I'm doing Great man, this uh, welcome to Hang with Bears. I'm not sure if you've done this before, but um, we're just gonna <laughs> no, <I'm... laughs> no dude, I, I caught a little bit of you and Candor's stream. I didn't get through nearly as much as I wanted to, but yeah, that Jack of that video cracked me up. And then I don't know if everybody saw the one that you redid, but that one was equally, if not a little more funny than uh, than the one he did. I was cracking up, yeah, yeah. I didn't know how to, I guess you just have to be in the in the in crowd. Because it, one doesn't work without the other. Well, mine didn't work without the first one, but I didn't comb my. I don't have a comb. What's happening, Vern Bear? You should have got a. You should have got one of those afro picks from Bowler while you were uh, while you're with him. That's what I. That's what I need is a, I need an afro pick for my afro down here. Yeah. So how how are you doing, man? You're busier than a. You're busier than a one armed bandit in a hurricane. <laughs> yeah, man, I'm doing good. We've been uh, we've been doing really well. Work's been extremely busy. The uh, the kids have been going nonstop, um, so they're having a blast. Um, our youngest just got over a cough. She's been kind of fighting for the last couple weeks, so uh, we're blessed to kind of be on the back nine of that um, mess. But um, yeah, otherwise everything's going good, man. We um, we got a weekend off from soccer this weekend, so we're going to go to the pumpkin patch with my uh, aunt and my cousins and take the girls out and show them a good time. Uh, Sam Wise Bear said, a one-eyed cat watching three mouse holes. That's pre- I like that. I haven't heard that one before. That's pretty busy. I used to say I'm, I'm, uh, I'm busier than, a, than a, an outhouse cleaner. What was I? <laughs> I'm busy. I'm busier than an outhouse technician at a fish concert. <laughs> there you go. Uh, that was my. Bob always had Van Dutch is up for an Emmy for his appearance on The Office. <laughs> <laughs> Jackobat's crazy. That was all his creation. That's what Van Dutch said. Yeah. So he. Yeah, that was really. Apparently, though. Those guys were watching and making fun of me. The well, making fun of both of us, but you know, I was the embarrassing one, according to what people were saying. But yeah, they watched, I mean, well, that's, watched the that's a good they watched the whole they watched the whole thing together. I would have I would have paid really good good money to see a video of those guys watching it and hearing hearing them just tear me apart. <laughs> I'm sure it exists on the dark web. Did you hear, Owen, have you been catching up on the streams, or are you too busy to catch them? I am, yeah. Actually, um, I've got, I think, like 20 minutes left on the Gardner stream, and then I caught about a half an hour of today's stream on the way home, but i got to finish that. I've been kind of, since he's been going on at 5, I'm usually on the road from like 4.30 to 5.30, so I'll uh, 
I'll, I'll watch like the first half an hour or so, and then I'll finish it up either in the evening or on my way into work in the morning. And uh, so I've been trying trying to stay up to date, especially with all that's been going on and uh, and special coming up, and and I uh, kind of want to be on top of everything that has been going on leading up to that. And I uh, mean, this week's been crazy. Just I mean, everything going on in the world and how it's kind of tying into what we have going on. And uh, man, they say laugh is the best medicine and for people in despair i mean it couldn't be couldn't be more um over the over the target you know so for this to be yep. dropping tomorrow on this week where people are fucking losing their minds um it's yeah more than a blessing yeah it's uh it's just a testament again to the to the um uh, wisdom of the bears the wisdom of owen and the bears uh, we aren't we aren't freaking out. Right. We're just not. <laughs> uh, but the reason I asked you that about listening to Owen is, did you catch Coffee Grounds Bear with his idea of having Owen be roasted at the next festival? I did. I did. Yeah, I thought that would be pretty funny. Yeah. I, I, and he's been uh, talking about it since, so I can tell he's really warming up to the idea. Yeah. Yeah, that, ought to, that, uh, that could go a couple different ways. So it'll be interesting to see how that plays out. Right. Well, and it's so funny because Coffee Grounds was so, like, nervous. Like, he kept going in the speakeasy. I don't know if it's a he. I think it's he. Uh, in the speakeasy, did, did he read my letter yet? I, I missed the stream. Did he read my, you know, like, and, you, you know, you're always skeptical when somebody says they're sending an idea to Owen because there are a lot of, I mean, I hate to be so frank, but there are a lot of bad ideas given to Owen. Yeah. And, you know, and I like Coffee Grounds. So I didn't, I didn't think, you know, anything one way or the other, but the odds were that it wasn't going to be anything. But I was uh, pleasantly surprised that it was a really cool idea. Yeah, yeah, pretty funny. It'll, uh, it'll definitely be funny to see it play out next year, uh, see how it goes and if it becomes more of a tradition. Well, I think it, uh, it's a no-brainer. I don't know why nobody thought of it before. Yeah. Well, I mean, this was the first year that uh, that he came. So, well, and only the second year, period. So, I don't think people were thinking his first year on the scene to, uh, you know, you know what, what should we do first? Let's just make fun of him. <laughs> I think. Well, that, but that's a not only. Well, it's got it's got several aspects to it. Not only is it a long-standing comedy tradition, you know, that some sure. of the greatest comedy that's ever been, you know, televised was those roasts. Yeah, definitely. uh, you know whether we like Jeff Ross or not, we have to admit he he was a funny dude. I will not admit that Jeff Ross is a funny dude. Okay, okay, uh, then you can yeah. Anyway, uh, but the other aspect of it is Owen. Owen's whole thing is um, based around that old school thing of being able to take a joke about yourself and being able to dish it and you know dish it out, take it in, take whatever, take it in, take it out. Well, and that's what I think would be really funny is him not just sitting there taking it, but then also... Um, oh, God. Throwing, well, that's the first thing. Throwing it right back. That's the first That's the first thing my mind went to was, like, people have no idea what they're going to be up against. Right. <laughs> but I definitely want... You know, I'm, I'm particular... I'm particularly... Um, what do you call it? I'm uh, I'm partial to Candor Bear because he's hanging out the house this week, doing electrical with me. He's doing a great job, but he's really funny. So I, I'm gonna, you know, give my vote, whatever it's worth. That uh, if there is a panel of roasters, I hope he's one of the ones roasting because he's a he's a funny dude. Nice, yeah, yeah, for sure. He might come down here. He's at the house. Kalina's making some kind of a hot sour soup. Kalina's been feeding him like crazy. But nice. uh, I got to go unlock the door at some point because I forgot to unlock it. He can't get in if he comes down here. So, yeah, it's probably for the best. <laughs> if, uh, you have to wash Joe Gagan's feet. That's terrible, Wobbly. <laughs> if you, she said, she said, if you suck, suck at, at roasting Owen, you have to wash Joe Gagan's feet. Yeah. That's awful. That's that's pretty. Uh, yeah, that's borderline torturous. So those of you who didn't see the stream last night, there was a little bit of a bare feet aspect of it. Were you watching what, during that? Or are you laughing at a thing? I'm laughing at what Wobbly just said after that. Oh. 
Well, I was going around the Costco parking lot with Candor Bear with no shoes on, and everybody said my hair was terrible, blah, blah, blah. Uh, what they expect? I, I took, right, I took a vote. I said, because we weren't having very good luck with the Costco customers. We were striking out quite a bit. And uh, so I took a vote in the chat. Uh, should I, I have some shoes with me as a backup. So should I wear shoes or not wear shoes? And it was like 100%. Put the shoes on. Hilarious. So does that make a difference? I, mentally, it did for me. Yeah. yeah. I have no I have no idea. I, I I think it was better with the bare feet, personally. Yeah. All right. Well, I mean, I can see that. I I can respect the bare feet. Did you ever listen to uh to Keller Williams at all? The musician. You ever heard of him? I've heard the name. name. He is pretty. We had a uh, we, we had a big real we had a big realty company here in Albuquerque called Keller Williams. We actually. So I could never get past that. We actually have them here in Maryland too. Oh, it's a national chain. Okay, sorry about that. Go keep going. Yeah, but the, but anyway, Keller, Keller Williams is like kind of like a uh, kind of like a fun type bluegrass solo act guy. He like kind of plays all different instruments on stage, but he's uh, he's infamous for being barefoot on stage. I don't think he's ever worn shoes on stage. Cool. Uh, yeah, you're not alone. Yeah, there are a lot of good. Play well, I think uh, it doesn't old Oliver Anthony go shoeless. Jeez, uh, who knows? No, he probably wears some kind of those like. I could just picture all kinds of weird hippie shoes or something. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I'm I trying think. to see. I'm trying to see Wobbly's comment now. Uh, that's whatever. Oh my! Oh my gosh! I can't even read that out loud. Yeah. <clears throat> so what do you um? So, so you were at the. So you're at the um, at the, the the special with the rest of us. You want to kind of talk about your experience? Where were you sitting? Kind of what was your feeling as it was starting? Um, I was feeling? actually I was only there for the first ten minutes. Then I had to go get ready for the Anchor Bear set. So I I just had to resign myself to the fact that I was going to see it all when I see the special. Oh, oh, I didn't realize that you weren't there for the entire entire. Uh, but I will say. I mean, just the first 10 minutes, the first, just him coming out there, the, like the excitement, even like in between, I don't know, there was a moment there where Anchor Bear and I were just sitting there at the mixing desk and we, we just took a second and I go, we, I, I don't know who started it, but it's like, this is like the, this is the culmination of like a five-year dream that we've all had. And yeah. we just, we stopped and really acknowledged that the moment was historic we didn't high five but it was like a it was like a verbal high five it was it was yeah. awesome and yeah. so but the so so that was the setup for him coming coming up you know just jumping up on stage and the energy in the tent i've never felt anything like that in my life just incredible yeah take it easy wobbly thanks for hanging out um yeah it really was when well, just that whole thing that anchor put together for his intro was just man it just gave everybody chills Cause that's what it's all. It's what it's been all about. Is it started as us just dreaming and just talking shit on D Live, and um, and then slowly but surely it just really started materializing into. Now we've got this incredible community, dense, dense with legends, and I mean strong families, and we got anywhere from you know a, a week old to fucking nine hundred years old. Uh, so we're really, I mean, we've got all kinds. Of great people in here coming from all different um you know different avenues different um corners of the realm and bringing their own knowledge and and just willing to share and learn and and kind of bleed onto other people what they know and kind of take away something at the same time and man it's just it's such a blessing i mean just even my kids like when we were leaving being like asking if it was a dr like we just experienced a dream and it's like it really felt like one and in yeah. a way yeah it is exactly what it was, and uh, but it was a lot more real than you know what they're used to understanding as a dream. And I'll just say one thing about the trolls. All this will be the only time I'll bring it up tonight. But the contrast when you hear that they're saying that the only people left, the only people that Owen has left, the only bears he has left are like the like the the scum and the you know like, like none of the good people are still here. 
I mean, when you contrast that with what we actually physically and metaphysically experienced at that festival, oh, yeah. there's no there's no question where the truth is. Well, you don't even hear that. Sh right. Yeah. Well, some people send me stuff, but whatever. Well, oh, but uh, but I yeah. mean, like metaphorically, you don't even, you don't feel it. You know, it's like, oh, like, I know. You, it doesn't even for a second start to even poke you because it's like you know that it's so far from the fucking truth. Right. And I mean. That we that you met and everybody you came in contact with and got to have whether it's a, a thirty second conversation or a five hour conversation, it's like everyone was. It was all so the quality was so high and everyone was so pure and honorable and just the same level of morality all the way across. And you don't have to wonder if anybody was bullshitting you or if like somebody right. was taking your shit when you're not looking. Like it was great, man. It it, it really is. It's like what, what everybody thinks a festival should be, but it it, ha it doesn't happen. Yeah. yeah. Well, it, <laughs> funny because like yeah, like you said, it's what a festival should be, and I mean, there's hundreds of festivals every year, and none of them can compare to to what we got to experience and what we will have to look to to look forward to in the future uh, with these festivals. And um, I mean, there's always some kind of you know, drama and drunk people and fighting and people being disappointed or, you know, some kind of mishap going on with these things. And it's like, we didn't experience even one. And one thing oh, that, wait, I, that really... Yeah, well, I, I can think of one, but I'm not even going to talk about it. You know what I mean. And okay. <laughs> and, <laughs> and it even resonated, it really resonated with me when Alan was talking about, like, one of the few bad things that happened with that guy in stitches. Like, even that was a blessing for that guy. Like, he needed that right. to happen. So that he could, you know, get his paperwork for his ID or license or whatever. And um, just the fact that even, like, a small mishap like that could turn into a blessing, whether it's for one person or for a group of people, was uh, it really spoke volumes for the just the vibration of the whole time. All right. Well, let me take it back and turn it back on you because we 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 kind of, like, glossed over the, the actual comedy set. So what was your experience of Owen's set, and what were your highlights? What were your favorite parts? Oh, man, it was great. Like I said, uh, well, so I, 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 st I sat with this guy, Brandon. I can't remember his – I don't think he has a bear name. He may have one by now, but he didn't at the festival. Uh, but he was kind of camped out next to us, and his little girl was hanging out with the twins the whole time. So, so him and I kind of kicked it off, and I was – and he was just there with his daughter. He didn't seem like he really knew a ton of bears. He just was excited to be around bears. So he came and sat next to me in the tent, and uh, him and I were sitting there talking before it started. And, um, and I look down to my right, and I see uh, long, Longbow and Bowler and Mama Jean, like, like a few seats in the same row, like right, right to the right of me. And I was like, oh, man, I didn't even realize that she was sitting right there. And I was like, man, this is great. Because I really wanted to not capture, but be able to experience her reaction to some of these jokes. And every time I look over, like, she would just be ear to ear grinning, just like, she she now is having more fun than Mama Jean. I mean, we were. I wonder. Talk about a she. Friend, you know? She might have actually had a sore face from smiling. Right. <laughs> it's possible. Yeah, she's uh she's trying real hard not to smile on the way home, just to kind of give her cheeks a break. Yeah. But yeah. Okay. So keep yeah was, keep going. That's that's yeah, cool. Yeah, it was great seeing seeing that that pride and, and like. Pride is such a dirty word nowadays, but like seeing that that wholesome pride on her face, that like her son not only was crushing, but like had encouraged all these hundreds of people, over a thousand people, to crush and to come together and to support that uh, was just. I mean, it's hard to even describe with words, man. But but I really appreciated and and found it hilarious, as did a lot of us, how he was. As the, as the routine went on, slowly starting to kind of curve what he was, how he was verbally delivering some of it because of the kids in the audience. And because of just the, not even necessarily in the audience, but they could have been outside the tent. And he was mindful of that. And like, you're not going to find A, any comedian who's going to allow kids at their show, much less B, if there are kids at their show, they're like, oh, fuck those kids. Like, if they're here, they're going to hear it or whatever. You know, this is my routine. This is what I do, and I'm not changing it for anybody. Not Owen. Owen's, like, a, the most stand-up, you know, stand-up comedian you could ever ask for. Fine. You know, he's, like, I. he's so focused on preserving the 
uh, innocence of these children that he's like, you know, I will, I, I won't stop saying nigger for anybody, but I will keep the vulgarity and the nastiness out of my bit for these kids right. because that is what matters. Not these people on Twitter who get their feelings hurt or some bees down the street who didn't like the word that I used to describe a thief, but these kids, these are our future. This is what's important. We are preserving their innocence at all costs. And, and to see him do that was not only funny at times, but also, I don't know like how, how to word it without sounding stupid, but it was just, it was a great feeling to see that. Well, he, I, I he, think like ende endearing, heartwarming. Oh, sorry. No, no, you're good. Good. Uh, it, well, like two words that came to mind, endearing and heartwarming. Yeah, yeah, exactly. The, the fact that he, he was putting those kids before his own, I mean, it was his special. It was his tent, his property, his fucking moment. He could have done anything he wanted. He was like, you know what? I'm going to, I'm going to kind of make sure that this is family friendly. And uh, and that speaks volumes. You're not going to find anybody else that does that, you know. What was your experience? Okay, MJ Corum told us not to spill the beans on any jokes, but we're we're about 24 hours out, so I think it's almost a fair game at this point. But yeah. So anyway, I don't want to I don't want to spill too many beans. I thought about that pre-stream. I don't want to spill any beans for uh for because I know a lot, I mean half the chat people I've seen in here were not there, so I know a lot of them are going to be hearing this for the first time, but. I really personally thought the uh, the um, the wishing well part was hilarious. Like the way he was talking about walking home with his wish, his pocket full of wishes. I thought I don't know. I just thought the way he that he worded and delivered that was really funny. But I mean, all of it was hysterical. I mean, the stuff that he's been posting the bits about, uh, kind of in the past week or so. And um, I know there's a handful that I've already forgotten. I'm gonna watch the special tomorrow night and like be kind of hit with it for the first time all over again. But, uh, you know what's going to be? I'm going to be curious to get your thoughts on it too. I'm going to I'm going to be wondering if things are going to hit you differently than it seemed in the moment. Uh, uh, I wondered the same thing. I don't know. I mean, I um, that was one thing that kind of going into it, I was curious. I was like, obviously he's hilarious. Obviously we all find him funny, or we wouldn't be here You're supporting him. But like we know what he jokes about. We know his punchlines here and there. And, and he had a lot that he, that he didn't spill the beans about, which I was impressed because he is, I mean, he's even faulted himself for spilling the beans more than maybe he feels like he should at times. But uh, it was hilarious part two. Yeah. I really like that bowler. That was hysterical because, uh, because that is like, that's like the reaction we kind of mentally have. Well, that, that one's been okay. That's not a, that's not spilling the beans because that's in one of the promos when he said, uh, yeah. Yeah. That, that one was hilarious. Cause it's such, it's so short and concise, but it's to the point. It's just like, it's, it's just, you know, you, they, you can't, uh, there's no beating around the bush. It's just like, it's disgusting. And it was the best response. And, uh, yeah, it was hysterical. Um, but, but what I was saying, the, um, I, I wasn't sure, like, how, how much, like, surprise. Like, you watch, like, a, say, comedy special 20 years ago or whatever. Like, these are all new jokes that you've never heard before. So you're laughing for the first time. And I wasn't sure that we were going to get that. Mm. But, even, but we did end up getting that, obviously. But even the jokes that we knew the punchline that was coming – it was still hilarious because, like, just that energy in the tent and, like, the way he delivered, everybody laughing together. I mean, it was just, how could you not? I don't know. I mean, even even the, the jokes that I – that he had kind of spilled the beans on the week before that we kind of kn knew what to expect, it was it was still hilarious. It was – there was uh, – there wasn't any way around it. Uh, without I, Without giving the joke away – what was your reaction to him feeling like he didn't uh, get a good reaction on the veteran material? I th so, okay, so I got a great answer for that. So I thought the veteran joke was hilarious. Uh, I think a lot of the people in the tent did, but I think why he – I think the reason he got the impression that it, it was a miss is because a lot on a lot of the jokes, people were laughing and clapping. There was like, a, uh, like an applause break between jokes. And I yeah. think because the veteran joke didn't get the applause, he thought it was a miss. But everyone was dying laughing. Yeah. I think they got to the point where we had, like, like applauded him, like, 25 times. So it was almost like, let him just keep going, you know. You got, 
So I. Oh, uh, you guys had you guys had spoiled him. You got him accustomed to too much uh, reaction. Right. Right, and then when he didn't get the clap and the laugh, then I feel like maybe he thought he missed it. But uh, no, yeah, I think he he hit it. I think everybody. I mean, I know I know everyone in my little like ten foot circle. Everyone that I could verbally hear, yeah, or audibly hear, was laughing hysterically the entire time, and not and that was no exception. Well, there was this thing that happened in comedy over the last fifteen years. I would say you know because I was becoming conservative through well I. Grads have been becoming conservative over a 30-year period. But in comedy, there was a transition period where all of a sudden, the comedians were telling jokes that were supposed to be, like, socially aware or socially, you know, SJW-ish. Right. And people would get – comedians started getting applause instead of laughs because all of a sudden they were – people were going to – like, liberals were going to comedy shows to go and hear a guy tell jokes about their favorite political cause. Do you remember right. that phase? Like when it, when it started getting real cringy, when people were just sort of like, it, it, it went, that's, I think that was the first sign that comedy was, was about to die because it no longer was about making people laugh. It was about getting their approval from the, the applause. And you're talking about it like during the Trump administration? Like that and, and even even before that, uh, yeah, even even a couple years before that, it was starting. Yeah, yeah. They, I mean, they've been trying to. I think whoever you want to call them or they, whoever you want to put in those brackets, yep. they, they they realize how how strong of a medicine laughter can be. They realize how how powerful it can be, how it can undo everything that they're trying to do. And it can just unthread their whole veil of nonsense by breaking their spells with laughter. And Owen's gotten really good at that. And, um, and I think that as we've seen comedy die down, I think that's, it's, it's been kind of like controlled demolition of comedy where they're like, okay, like, we can't. We can only allow you guys to joke about so much because we really need the fear to kick in. And if people are too busy laughing, then they're not going to have the fear. They're not going to have the, uh, the 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 emotional connection and the trauma and everything that they need everyone to have. Um, it kind of comedy's released from that, as we're all living proof of. And um, right, so I, I would say that's a that's a main reason it's happened. Now, this like propagandized control narrative nonsense has been going on way longer than comedy has been dying. So uh, right. I don't know if maybe I would guess maybe with the age of, of technology and these truth or jokes and truth or topics being able to be widespread in a moment, uh, in, a, in a matter of seconds or minutes, I think has caused them to really try to slow it down more because when you think about it, 20, 30 years ago, you're seeing it in comedy clubs you might see it on TV if they're, like, really famous, but it's, like, they only have, like, one special every few years. It's not like it's not like um, Owen where they're putting out funny shit every day or even on a weekly or monthly basis. Uh, it's a lot more spread out. And then you have someone like uh, Carlin who's going against, quote, unquote, the system and saying all the edgy jokes for the, that time that people think he's not allowed to say. But um, I think – they allow those one or two people to kind of touch on those topics and they can kind of write them off as crazy or comedian and, oh, he doesn't really mean what he's saying. Or you can kind of, you know, we don't have to worry about him because he's not really a person of control or a person that has a following. But And that's where Owen's kind of changed that a lot because he does have this following. And and, uh, and Norm was kind of similar. He had a lot of a cult following. And, uh, well, Norm, Norm, there was... I followed him pretty I followed him for a long time and he was his career was never I mean he probably made a lot of money because he was on um not Malcolm in the Middle but uh that other one there was a a show that was a copy of Malcolm in the Middle uh I think it was just called the Middle anyway Norm would get these you know bits on TV shows and stuff so I think he made money but he kind of got blackballed from the mainstream comedy touring scene because uh, more than kind of yeah definitely 
he was he was struggling to get the mainstream kind of work that I mean he I, I don't know what he was making money wise but he wasn't playing to big audiences he had he had become really um, sidelined during a lot of his career well they even kicked him off SNL right yeah but that that was that was long before the period I'm talking about right I'd say the last the last ten or fifteen years of his life he was still revered. But I think the the machine that makes people famous uh, thought he was too volatile. I think they really put a leash on him, really put a, a governor on his on his carburetor. Yeah. As far as what what gigs they were giving him. Yeah. So Brian, and he he put it all on the line too. He didn't have any problem. There was a famous place, a famous time that he basically walked a whole room in the Midwest because he told a really nasty joke right up front and it was a bunch it was like a fan like in nebraska or somewhere middle america and i think like 70 percent of the room or 80 percent of the room got up and walked out and there was a you know there was a controversy about whether he should get paid he had to go he was on tv the next day talking about it like local tv it was it, they i think they told him to apologize to the town or something it, it was yeah and he had that stuff happening all the time because he didn't he didn't compromise right yeah, why would you? I mean, there's plenty of reasons. I mean, people do it all the time, but good on them for not doing so. Brian uh, Lawrence had a good question. Who are some top picks for roasting Owen next year? Um, if I had to guess, I would say that Bowler and Cod would be would be top of the list because Cod gets roasted more than anybody, and Bowler's fucking hilarious. Film Grant, I gotta answer the door. I forgot to I, I forgot to unlock the door. I told you this was gonna happen. I forgot uh, to unlock the door. We're streaming. Out there in the fucking. I rain. guess you're watching. I don't yeah. have to tell you. What the... I just want to get up and Here, I got you a prop. <laughs> I don't know what this is about. Candor Bear just showed up. He says he brought me a prop. What is right. What is this? Was he out there hitting it in the rain? Did, does it have to be at a jaunty angle? Yeah. What do you call it? A. <laughs> He's wandering around the shop now, like like a ghost. Unbelievable. Okay, we're the. I'm sorry, I got I got everything sidetracked. Uh, yeah, I'd like to see Candor Bear up there. You named all the obvious bowler, obviously. Um, I think Go to Matt would be good up there. Go to uh, be good. Oh, I, I was thinking of some people the other day. Well, we got to come back around to that because because we're we're gonna make a lot of people mad by not mentioning them. There are a ton of funny people. It's it's too many. Uh, Bowler had a really wise comment a minute ago. I want to try to get back to it. Speaking of Bowler, hey Copper's here. Are we gonna get her on here? Or what's going on? Hey Copper, you you uh Copper, you want to come in? Are you uh are you decent? <laughs> Uh, it's, it was way back there. Uh, it was a really uh, poignant point about uh, comedy. Uh, type it again, Bowler, if you can remember it word for word. I want it to be as good as it was last time. Bowler said Wobbly would kill it, too. That'd be hilarious see Wobbly. Yeah, she's our uh, Roseanne Barr. Yeah. No, what is she? <laughs> that was just the first thing that came to mind. I'm probably not going to live this down saying she's. I made myself laugh. Oh, here we go. Hey, Cap. Hi. Good evening. <laughs> Good evening. I was um, I was finishing. I was canning a lug of pears, so my son has been juicing them for me. Nice. So I have to get that all prepped. Very good. Um, well, um, but I've been listening. Yeah. So, been ran ran so let's, uh, let's hear what you have to say. Yeah. Well. You know, I think I'm really very much in agreement that, um, you know, with what you said about Anchor and you just kind of sitting at the soundboard and watching everything kind of start. Um, it was an amazing experience and it really was, you know, just, I think most of us have been here with the Bears um, since Owen got kicked out of Hollywood. And I remember every single episode, because I've watched most of the streams, um, most of 
maximum once, but a lot of them two and three times because, you know, I didn't really like anything else that was online. It just resonated. His messages resonated with me. And I remember when he would just be talking to Amy about, uh, you know, he would have, have her calling all these places saying, and she's like, why are you kicking me off Airbnb? Why are you, you know, he didn't do anything. If you look at what's going on from the other side, in, instead of just taking whatever message that you're listening to, um, then I think you would be allowing him to go and, and do his comedy um, to the point of where the last time he toured, he was, you know, in a library. Right. And um, so that's kind of where it started, like that seed started there. And so it was just a beautiful electric moment to see him go on stage. And, you know, uh, like I think Finks, you said like a lot of the stuff maybe we've heard to some extent, but there was some new material as well. And, you know, we also have to recognize that just because we may have heard like bits and pieces here on the streams doesn't mean that it's in this succinct comedy special. Right. Like there's a difference. For sure. And um, <clears throat> so I'm excited to see it again. And, you know, cause I was there but I think it might resonate a little bit differently, especially with, um, you know, Adam going in and, and just getting it from different angles. Cause you know, you're sitting in the crowd, you get one angle and, you know, there's just many different things that you may not have seen. And so I'm really excited to see what Adam did. Um, and, you know, obviously there's a huge team that went into editing that. And so I'm just, I can't be more, I don't know if proud is the right word, but I, I'm going to use it right now of everything of everyone that just participated in it, even the crowd for making it because I've tra traveled a lot um, to go to bear meetups. And I know that it costs quite a bit of money to get to and from sometimes. And a lot of people came even from outside of the country. Like that's the first um, to come from the southern hemisphere whatever that is um to go to the comedy show and or to the special and have this event in missouri uh, there's a lot of just really special things about the whole festival and the first time just delivering the special to the world and the other thing is i'm glad that they priced it at 20 dollars because owen's whole thing is I'm never going to price my comedy shows more than $20 yeah. and he sticks to that. And so I'm glad that he didn't cheapen himself and also that he, he remains true to what he said he was going to do. Oh, Bowler Bear is angry because he paid $80. Um, <laughs> that's a nigger tax. <laughs> no, that was, uh, that was actually $60 was for all of our music. And then yeah. the 20 was. That's fair. Yeah, it really was. Like uh, Copper just said, and I said a little bit ago, I mean, pr pride and proud has kind of become like a dirty word in society, but that is how all of us felt in that moment. Like, yeah. for them and for our community and for, you know, Mama Jean and for everybody that got to be a part of that. Because like you said, people came from everywhere. I mean, I felt it just driving across the country to get there. I could feel like this energy, like, getting stronger as we got closer. Like, call it hippy dippy, whatever the fuck you want to, but... I could just like feel all this gravitating to this place. And like, once I got there, it's just like surreal. Like it was just uh, unbelievable, like, hard to describe. And it's just like, yeah, proud is exactly what we felt in that, in that tent. Like he came yeah, out. I, I want to, I want to give it a better word, but that's the only word I can come up with right now. But it really is. It's just like, it, it wasn't just Owen, like it was Owen and the rest of us. Yeah. That yeah. You know, I had to bring it. Sure. I, I've been finding myself, whenever I talk about what Owen has accomplished, I, I've been adding and the Bears almost all the time yeah. because there he wouldn't be who he is without the Bears and we wouldn't be who we are without him. Right. Yeah. If that sounds a little culty, then uh, just everybody can fuck off. And how dare you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Um, Bud Bear says uh, they're Bud Bear said they're gonna gonna um, do a bonfire with the projector on the barn this weekend. There's gonna be a bunch of viewing parties. I think we some of them probably haven't even been announced yet, but it's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think Port Bear said a lot of a lot of comedians will like go into the clubs and just kind of run these jokes um, past like random crowds. And Owen just has the speakeasy saloon, but you forget that he, you know, when I was, after he was talking about it, when he, we came back and it was that first thing, I really started thinking about it. And I was like, he doesn't hear any laughter. It's just complete silence, just him talking to a screen. Nobody else is around. Right. He just gets to see the ha ha ha's in the chat and hopefully no LOLs. <laughs> but you get to see all the people like responding. And so it's all through this, you know, the speakeasy. And but he doesn't get to hear the actual like energy of that laughter oh. and it's that sound and I wonder if that's why he banned the LOLs because it's not actually OL. Like it's like laughing in silence. Yeah. Like it's. it's <laughs> He's like, this, this isn't out loud. I can't hear it. You're not laughing. Yeah, it's fine. Any, but anytime, any, well, I kind of give women a pass. I don't, I don't do it. I, I haven't done the LOLs in a long time just because it's been so like bear shamed. Yeah, yeah. But anytime I see it, I just kind of inwardly cringe. Did you say in <laughs> inwardly? Inward? Inwardly cringe, yeah. <laughs> I'm just like, oh. I think of the word you're like, oh. niggardly. <laughs> yeah, I feel niggardly. I have, <laughs> but I have a confession to make. Or maybe I had a realization. Right, this is I have never. Cucumber. <laughs> Say that say that again, Finks. Uh, I was just talking with you. I said this isn't the time for confession. Okay, well maybe, maybe it was a, a a realization. There you go. Because I have never, I have, <laughs> I in you know in twenty three years of being on the internet, I have never typed out L O L in, in that formation. I've never typed it out. But I'm one of those those guys who will. <laughs> I'm one of those people who will write ha ha or ha 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 after something I write. And I suddenly realized about five years ago, it's the same as LOL. Yeah. But, but, it, but for some reason we've given it a little bit of a, a, a less of an asshole meaning or you like, you're less of an asshole if you say ha 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 instead of LOL. Right. Well, Owen has a song. Um, oh yeah. Yeah. Sometimes you say ha ha and other times he he. Right. Uh, I can't remember the rest of it, but he, he made a song about it. And I think that just, that was early on. So it was kind of imprinted and I've heard it so many times now that anytime anybody does an LOL or LMAO, <clears throat> I'm just like, nope, <laughs> don't like Dude, that. That was a, people, we should bring it. that, we should bring that song back around. It was a really good song. Yeah, we should find um, Sleuth. I'm hoping that uh, Niggle will get to where I can get my premium subscription or even the professional subscription um, at a certain point. I don't know when that's going to happen, but I'm I'm waiting for it because I love I love to Niggle. But. Yeah. <clears throat> Same. So it's still just in the basic format for now, correct? Um, yeah, I think it's still at the um, basic subscription. I don't. And, and I, I don't want to. I don't want to brag, but uh, I was given access to the premium as a beta tester. Well, you're doing I don't poor, brag. poorly at it because yeah. where's my song? <laughs> where's your what? Oh, she wants. I said you're doing poorly at it. Where's my song? <laughs> you didn't ask me to, to find I it. it. She well, just I did. Not that you had the premium subscription. I didn't I don't, have premium I beta. don't even know. I, I'm kind of over bragging. I'm kind of like halfway making shit up. Uh, C Kyle sent me, the, sent me a link to like the advanced version. I think it's what's going to be the premium, but I don't even know if that link's still good. He just wanted to get my feedback and I looked at it and messed around for a while and gave him some feedback and I've never tried that link again. So. Um, Andrew Barris said that C Kyle showed him the premium. Yeah. If you're, 
If you're in good with Sea Cow, you got you got a really easy life. You got a good life. I think he was joking. He could be. He's sitting. You know, he's sitting in some other room over here in my shop, and I can hear my voice echoing back every once in a while. Shows <laughs> Niggle works with a typewriter. That's hilarious. Oh my God. I do have good news about Sea Cow. Um, you know, some people know he got to play on stage on the open open jam on Sunday night, which was awesome. It was wonderful playing with him. Uh, he's going to start working up some songs so he can maybe even do a whole set next year. Or so nice. Uh, there's going to be all, all kinds of cool stuff. And Spool Bear is coming with his band as well. Oh, nice. Yeah. I'm glad, glad to see. Um, <clears throat> uh, so I. I've been working, well, I've been getting lessons for Huckleberry with Susie G mm. for him to learn piano. Great call. And yeah. um, before I before I gave him lessons, I took a lesson with her just to like um, work on some vocals. So, cause I was going on, um, but, but I'm hoping that maybe next year she's able to go on. She's an amazing artist and she's very musically gifted. And so I, I super duper hope that she's able to do that. And if you guys are looking for um, a, an instructor for, I think she plays pretty much everything. Um, she's a great resource and it's supporting a bear. Well, and um, I hope she could make it. Yeah. I, I would, I talked to her the first year, but I didn't again this year. I should have, but I tried to get her to come the first year and she had stuff going on, but you know, Owen keeps talking about he wants a tent or some kind of a, a a setup where the kids can go learn music during the festival, which I'm he even mentioned me as somebody who might be uh, helping put that together. So I'm I'm pleased that uh, if I get to you know help with that, I'm very pleased that that's going to happen because I think it's it's awesome. Imagine how how much of a hit it would be if the kids thought they were learning guitar from Santa Claus. Well. Well, that's a little bit controversial in the bear community because I don't know how many of the parents aren't giving their kids the Santa Claus thing. That's true, true. But if they see that there's actually a real guy, and instead of <laughs> being fake, he like plays <laughs> <in his head. laughs> Candor. <laughs> He's can, now I can hear Candor laughing in the. Where are you in there? That's. This is, oh, you're at that desk. Okay, that's fine. There's all kinds of places to hide in this place. Um, but yeah, um, I'm excited for next year. It sounds it's gonna sounds like it's going to be a little bit more. Echo. Yeah, I can hear you, Kendra. He's just gonna make himself part of the show, whether we want it or not. Right. It's terrible. You should have kept the door locked. <laughs> um. But I, I'm really excited to hear that there's going to be a lot more kid-centered activities yes. next year. And I think I um, suggested a children's talent show, even if it's like, you know, in the morning or whatever. Like there's a slot um, put uh, in there because I think the boys would have loved to play violin. Yeah. Um, I think that a lot of other kids are just really musically gifted and it just gives them a chance to shine and not just watch the adults be on the stage but it gives them a little bit of time to like make it about showcase their talent yeah well i can't i can't make any official proclamations right now but you know if i have anything to do with it i think it would be a really good incentive if we had these music things ongoing throughout the weekend with the goal at the end of it where Sunday night we actually feature all the kids doing a song together so that they're actually working toward a live performance. Yeah, that'd be cool. Even if it's just like a simple <laughs> or something that they could all like be. Oh my gosh, of. if they did Hallelujah, the Russian version, that would be so cute. Hallelujah. Bowler, Bowler Bear said, Daddy, I learned Ooh. guitar from Santa. The Bowler Bear said, Daddy, I learned guitar from Santa Claus's barefoot, malnourished <laughs> grandfather, father. Yep, exactly. Joe couldn't find shoes or a spoon the whole weekend. Was I looking for a spoon? Were you... That's what the that's what the, the the legend says. Oh yeah, I, I I was eating yogurt to try to have some fast 
su sustenance, and I I was losing my spoon. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know anybody would remember somebody, something so stupid as I can't <laughs> can't find my spoon. You know who reminded me about that? My my little one did. Oh, I gotta remember tell you a joke that Santa I was. Santa Claus couldn't remember where his spoon. Yeah, was. didn't remember he couldn't find the old guy couldn't find his spoon. <laughs> <laughs> I also had a. I do love. I do love make trying to make kids laugh. I say trying to make kids laugh, but uh, I I got to hang out with anchor bears kids quite a bit because they were hanging out by the by the side of the stage a lot and once they got to know me a little bit they knew that really weird stuff was going to come out of my my uh mouth so at one point i just said to the older the two old the two boys i said uh i'm just gonna sleep i'm just gonna i'm just gonna sleep right here for a little bit but you guys wake me up if anything happens and you can see their wheels turning like how do we determine Determine like what's important enough to wake him up, or you know, like <laughs> so. About every about every three, I just lay there with my eyes closed, and about every two or three minutes, I'd get up. I say, "Did anything happen?" <laughs> no. Terrible. Nope. Kids are easy. Kid, I I love kids because <clears throat> you can tell really crappy jokes, and they still laugh. Or they give yeah. you a puzzled look of like, "What are you talking about?" Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's uh, camera bears kids. Um, <clears throat> I'm, I'm excited. Huckleberry agreed to go next year. Nice. Um, so awesome. I'm pretty, pretty stoked about that. He didn't, he didn't want to go to Hawaii and he didn't want to go to Bear Tire Ozarks, but I think he agreed to go next year. Um, the last so one I'm, that he was at that I know of was, um, Colorado in 2021 or, oh, oh, well, the, and the Crush Fest in Pennsylvania. It was. Yeah, Crush Fest in Pennsylvania. Yeah, he's gone to several other ones, um, but for a while there, he didn't want to travel anywhere. We, I, I took him all over. The, like, I traveled a lot. You know this. I don't even know. I, I I'm pretty sure it's like seventy thousand miles at this point. Yeah, I can't tell you how many people. You blaze most bear trail, have you? Pretty much. I, You're one I mean, I can get one of those little maps of the united states and like probably fill in most of the states with um places that i've had bear meats at. that's awesome some so. some people might be newer and not know the number but didn't you do eighteen thousand miles in eight in 2021 <clears throat> that sounds about right yeah yeah crazy yeah that was a that was big 2022 was pretty big um a little bit i guess i kind of like dialed it way back this year obviously with family stuff yeah. but um <clears throat> i reckon I'll, I'll get back on it i really want to go out of the country and visit some bears um some of my bear one of some of my early bear friends that i met um when d let we had just gone to d live and i was doing all those camps canning and cooking streams which was just really just kind of a fun thing to do um but i had some friends uh some bear friends from that that are from israel and from scotland and i would just love to go visit them like we still talk pretty often and um they're just dear to me and i would just love it i would fucking love to invade canada bowler they <laughs> She, she just got that rebellious look. That's pretty funny. <laughs> Those fuckers. <laughs> oh, where was I going? I was doing uh, something, and then there was somebody that was from Canada, and I was, I was is, like, I gotta ask: Is Adam? I know uh, Adam Filmgrain was in the chat. Are is, are you still here, Adam? I have a question for you. I think he is still here. Let me see. Yeah, he's still. <laughs> I think Candy Bear is just laughing at the comments. I was going to say, well, okay. Funny being said right now. Uh, I'll, I'll assume he's still here. I'll ask the question. I want to know if he had any um, brilliant, um, if, if he had any brilliant flashes about how the jokes could be better and maybe 
swapped some of the punchlines around when he was editing. I know Owen said that they weren't, they didn't cut any of it, right? They, they're, they, they, like uh, yeah, that's a, that's just a total, uh, left field joke. It's probably not a good joke. Yeah. Yeah, it didn't land. In fact, right, the, might, if you need to the looks on your the looks on your faces were were priceless because they were it was just like <laughs> blank. Just <laughs> we were waiting for it. He's... Okay, um, <clears throat> Film Grade says he did not swap any punchlines around. Good. I think Joe's just looking for a blooper reel, but he's not going to no. get it. No. no, we had a, a whole we had two and a half hours of a blooper reel last night. Oh look, you made Simone and Poppy laugh. <laughs> Shocker. <laughs> There's no ch chance it's the weed. So Simone uh, and Poppy uh, is, in fact, we've had um, big back and forths about this in the speakeasy. Simone and Poppy uses more haws than anybody I've ever met, and he gets away with it. Copy and paste the thing. Go. He, he has paste like six times and it gets like, haws. Okay, so the guys... just left, and that was six haws. So Samoa Poppy does laugh a lot, and so I bet he's he's minimizing the number of la the he, haws that he's. It's like, possible. Not even me putting uh, them on. Right. I brought this guy. This is perfect. I brought this guy down here to laugh at my shit uh, in real time because it's just like um, there's a bunch of. People that have done that, where they don't have a crowd, but they have like a producer off to the side laughing at their jokes. Dick DiPaolo does that right now. It's a it's a real style where you've got your own laughing guy that just laughs at your shit. Every, every once in a while, you go, "Oh, we laughed at it." <laughs> well, you gotta see. He's reserving guy. the number of haws he's actually doing. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so Adam said that, that he's. Adam gave us a compliment uh, that we crushed last night. I, I appreciate you saying that. I, I'm going to give 70% of the credit to my co-host, Canterbury. He saved the day. I told Jackobat he made it four times better than it would have been because he was he was a crusher, man. Balls. He had balls, but he was also very um, good with people. Like he was, He's able to be very related to people. He has real compassion for people. So that's what makes um, trying to interact with them in the public rewarding because they didn't feel like they were being um, intruded on or sold anything. We were just trying to share comedy with them. And most people got that from his demeanor. Uh, most of them were trying to get away from me. <laughs> Bowler said that you, uh, you need a builder buddy just to validate your jokes. <laughs> that's what I hired him. Uh, I, that's what I actually hired him up here to laugh at my jokes. Excellent. I didn't put that in writing or anything, but it was kind of just understood. It's in the fine print. We all know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Four Bear wants to know who played Ye in Film Grain's new clip. I had that same question. <clears throat> I bet he wasn't even black. I bet it was Ye. I, did you see uh, Bowler Bear's comment? I think he's talking to you that you that you didn't laugh on stage. I don't know what he's saying not on stage. Uh, with the fists. Everything is delayed. He's delayed over there. I think he's talking about uh, getting punched. I could be wrong. Uh, oh. Provider Bear did the uh, did the A impression. That was a pretty good impression. Nice. Way to provide, Provider Bear. Yeah. He was eating popcorn with that thing on. Yeah. Isn't Provider Bear a part of the family that's putting on the big uh, viewing party this weekend? They're the the, um, so Provider Bear is Jackson Farms. Yeah, they're Jackson Family. They're Farms. putting on the big. Yeah, they're putting on the big um, party for the premiere up yeah, there. Yeah, they have. It's awesome. Um, that's actually where I first met Adam. Um, I went down to California last year and visited some California bears, and their their little homestead is so cute, and it's you know super simple, but they you know make really good work of the space that they have and they just maximize everything and uh they have some really awesome events down there <laughs> yeah yeah it makes me jealous i'm not there well you can host all i all i have so. is all i have is this guy and kalena actually i'm i'm very blessed to have uh both of them 
Um, are there no more Albuquerque bears? They all went on. They all went on the weed. No, there are. I shouldn't say that. We, we. Have, everything in Albuquerque. I'm not joking. Everything in Albuquerque broke down, and there was weed related to all of it. And it's not because just because I'm against it, but that had a little bit to do with it in some of the cases. But weed is a divider; it's not a uniter, and that's what happened in Albuquerque. We couldn't have meetups because certain people wouldn't let new people in because they were growing illegal plants and blah blah blah. I'm not mentioning any names. <clears throat> gotcha. Uh, so, but we. We have some. We have the Helton Bears. Uh, it's a family of three. They have a little boy, and I haven't met him in person. I've known about him for like six months, and we've been trying to get together, but they're really busy. And I really wanted to kind of do a meetup while Candor was in town. We just didn't. We just we're just so slammed because we're basically re rewiring our whole house in the middle of all this too. That's what he's really here for. Mm -hmm. And laughing at your jokes. Yeah, let's let's not leave. We that. laugh. Well, we've been laughing all day. We've been having a blast. But he's doing really good work too. I recommend him as a as an electrician. Yeah, we have some pretty. I told him he should go. I told him he should go on tour. He's got people already hitting him up to come help. <laughs> I said you should just go all around the country and and wire houses and stuff for bears. He's got a really nice set of tools, man. He's 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 set up to do it for real. He's not licensed, but he's uh, he knows what he's doing. Did he get them from tour attorney? But a couple at the festival. Nice. It was symbolic. Uh, Hector was going and giving everybody a couple of tools just to, as, as a symbolic gesture. For sure. <laughs> <laughs> These are not even good jokes. Hector, <laughs> Hector is so funny. Like he's so hard on me. Like he's just like a older brother. Who is? Every time. He's so Ooh. funny though. Tool returning. A tool returning. Oh, he is he is he is <laughs> hilarious. It was so fun to have him to hang out with. Oh, you know, and he did a awesome. just yeah. since we're um since we're plugging the special, we kinda got sidetracked here talking about dumb shit, but um Hector did a fantastic job as uh Adam's extra cameraman and gopher. I don't know what his title was, but he worked his ass off like everybody did. Yeah, most definitely. It was really He's fun to see those guys. It was really fun to see those guys interact too because they had a, a really funny chemistry. Yeah. Um, he's just an all around very talented uh, guy. And so it's great having him as um, a, a bear. And to I get to see him like at, pretty often now. Yeah. I've met him yeah. a few times. So. It's kind of cool to see like just different people that come because you know there's I don't know I think that there's something to it what <clears throat> when I first started the Great Bear Trail and I was deciding like, like am I gonna do this because um, I you know the idea had just come in to like go and travel around and uh, what's going on <laughs> people are just it's I'm laughing at candor, laughing at comments. So it's it's now gone several layers deep. It's ridiculous. Okay, I'm not gonna try to figure your mind out then. Um, but when I first started um, going on the bear trail, it it was um, I was really like knowing that God wanted me to go on this on these trips and adventures and like to engage with these people. <clears throat> um, and so I, every meetup is, it's different. It's just what you need. And so um, I think that's part of how cool it is. I think that <clears throat> having the special and then the documentary afterwards, um, cause I think that'll come up after we'll have the documentary. I believe, I hope so. Cause I missed some of the speakers. Um, yeah. yeah, Adam, Adam, can you spill any? Any beans as far as that's concerned while you're in here? Because I was kind of curious the same thing. I would imagine it's going to be a separate a separate uh, project for sure because there's just so much footage. I mean, I know the last day him and I were talking about all the memory cards he had filled up over the weekend, and it's nuts. I mean, terabytes on top of terabytes on top of, you know, it's a lot to go through. 
Yeah. Um, yeah. If anybody anyways, has any, this is a, oh, I, I wanted to let you finish that. I'm sorry. Yeah. Just to finish my statement, like, you know, people like Tour Turner and, you know, Joe, we've met several times. Finks, we've met a couple of times. I think you and I've I think, been at about, I think we've been at at least eight meetups together, maybe 10, because including my house. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We've been to a, a, quite a few together. Um, I think you're the second most traveled person. Well, in 2021, I was. I kind of stopped keeping track. But, yeah, every year I've traveled a lot. I did about 8,000 miles in, in 21. Did I say documentary wrong? You said it <clears throat> like Owen does, which is – or used to. I like the way he says it. <laughs> the buller's making fun of me. He's throwing bananas at me right now. <laughs> I wanted to um, urge everybody watching. we got 30 people in here. If you have any questions for Adam, uh, put them in the question box and we'll read them out loud and then he'll type the answers. Because yep. this is your chance to talk to the director. This is crazy mm -hmm. that he's in here. Yeah. Yep. Okay. I've met Sleep sleep Deprived um, at the Bay, Bay Area meetup. We had a Bay, Bay Area meetup. Um, I don't know. I've just, I, I get a wild idea in my head and I'm like, I'm going here and I'm going to go to this meetup because I heard about it. And yeah. <clears throat> I just go do it. I don't know. Um, I try not to question. I try not to question like the reason why. You're following. And I was talking with the bear. Pardon? You're following the calling. Yeah. I was <clears throat> talking with the bear yesterday. Um, and I was like, like, you know, uh, he was talking about, you know, when something comes to mind and it's like, bring your camera or, you know, be, am I taller than sleep deprived? No, I think he's a little bit taller than me. Um, but anyways, <clears throat> um, I try not it's it's almost listening to that voice inside of like you need to go see this person like i've gone a couple times to go visit bible reading there um and, and so it's it's like one of it is she can't go anywhere she's out in the middle of kind of out in the middle of nowhere and but she needs a community just as much as anybody else does and so you know I've visited her a couple times and one of them was just like spur the moment. We just decided to go and visit her because we were in the, the area, <laughs> in the area in the middle of Illinois. Right. <laughs> um, but um, that's the great thing about it. And I think when we get together, uh, <clears throat> to, I was listening to Gardner stream with Owen yesterday and uh, they were talking about like the psychic, attacks but there's also these um these these attachments that we have with people and it's like the people that you're around um they almost resonate with you and it's still in your energy field like they're still in there and that's why after the festival you could be buzzing for a long time i think <clears throat> probably mama jane's still buzzing it sounds like from it <laughs> it was like the most exciting thing that's probably happened to her in many years and um, um so there there is something to that of being in um <clears throat> being together and having these meetups it's so important and our society is kind of pushed away from that so much um, but to have this like togetherness and then to share laughter with one another, um, it's pretty amazing. Yeah. yeah well, like, uh, uh -huh. talking about the hooks and stuff that you get from other people. And it's like, there's like a positive side to that as well. I think that's what we all experience. Like you're saying, it's like yeah, major take takeaway. And it's not just, it's not like a consumer takeaway. Like you're, we're all contributing to this and we're all taking a little bit of, of what everybody's contributed with us on our way out. And um, yeah, it's tough to describe. Well, encouragements, man. I, <clears throat> I was having conversations with bears at the festival and, you know, sometimes it, there's like bear meetups where I'm just like, Oh, just here's some gravy. And it's like, people's minds just get blown. Like, Whoa, where did that come from? Now they're 
like they start like engaging with that and that's like taking this like idea and then like expanding it yeah and um and or like you know I think you guys most of you guys heard my letter and um you know I talked about it on the last stream after the the post festival stream we were talking about it was like I was meant to go to the festival like God literally answer it like he he made it very obvious like here's your ticket you're going yeah. and i just had to make it happen and it was <clears throat> um, um it wasn't like a question of like oh maybe i won't go because whatever the finances to get there is going to be you know i could spend it on something else or whatever but no it was like you were meant to go and then the conversations that i had like um <clears throat> i don't know is this uh I had Mr. Whitbear, like I was just listening to him talk like him talking to me, like just we were just talking about like really deep conversation and I'm just like in tears, but I'm just still engaged in it. But it's just like my the emotions are just moving through me. Like there was healing going on. Anytime I cry, I know I'm healing. And well Mr. 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 Whitbear is an awesome soul. That's all absolutely. I can say. Like, yeah. Absolutely. And he's a wonderful musician. He's got a beautiful singing voice, and I hope that he sings with me. But Yeah. <clears throat> um, well, let's, yeah, let's do it. Yeah. Uh, I, I need to write some songs first. But then, um, you know, the same thing, I was talking to Sidetrack Life Bear, who is also a legitimate, amazing crusher. And like, oh, yeah, sitting there and talking, and he's telling me about his. He, we didn't even talk about me, he was just talking about him and how he's lost his parents, and he was like, It just happened, and all this stuff. And I, you know, I've gone through a similar s situation, and I'm just like feeling for him, and I'm just like, in tears. <laughs> Cause at, the, at that point, it was just like the wet works we're going we're on you know what and the best well the best part about him is um he kind of makes me not seem so old <laughs> there's nobody that will make you not seem old i didn't mean to interrupt i just had to have a joke but keep going because it's beautiful <laughs> um but yeah so i'm sitting there and i'm having this like really i'm just listening to um, you know, sidetrack life and, and we'd met before we'd met at, um, crush fest 21, <clears throat> but I never really got to sit and talk with him. He was engaged in another conversation, but in, in this instance, we were able to have this really long, deep conversation and I'm just listening and, and following along and like, um, and, and hearing like the things that he's going through. And I'm just like, I'm just so moved because it's like, Oh, you're not the only one that's going through things like this. You know, other people are experiencing the same thing. You're not unique in that. Um, it's unique to you, but it's not unique to the whole space. Right. And um, and so I'm, I'm just really grateful that we can have those moments that we can have laughter and truth. Um, like most of us are truth seekers. Um, by nature and by probably by personality and that we can have that and um, <clears throat> just have an area of honesty. Like a lot of the times I'm like, I don't even know if I want to invite like the people in my crew into my world here because I just, I cherish it so much. I like to keep it where it is <clears throat> and I don't want to sully it at all with right. people that may not be able to handle some of this stuff. Yeah. We might get another Jim Bob if we start letting people in. Who's that? Right? Yeah, I said <laughs> I, I said I wasn't going to bring it up. I, I broke my own rule. I'm sorry. I, I will stop now. Still did. Unbelievable. There's been, been wonderful, wonderful comments in the chat. A bunch of men, like grown men, are telling them, telling each other they love each other and all this stuff. So, I don't know. It's not gay. Burn Bear had a really <laughs> cool comment. It's way up in the thing, but he was just talking about how he's living in this country, which we all know because he never shuts up about it. But he's living in this country, 
and he feels this unity with all these people, even though we're, we've got all this distance. And then his final thing was, I love you all or something like that. Well, and that's the thing is like, even the people that can't make it um, for whatever reason, that they still have the online community, that they still, you can go to the speakeasy. Um, and it's, <clears throat> you know, there's over 2000 people that are a part of that, that you know, maybe 10% actually participate. And um, <clears throat> it still is a community that wasn't of for, people. That wasn't for Kyle. I just flipped off Finks for his asshole comment. <laughs> we're having, we're having two, we're having like two different streams here. Copper's trying to be all statement. Copper is saying the most wonderful stuff. And yeah. we're over here just. <laughs> I'll well, just we can, we can make I'll just jokes. be I'll just be mellow for the next twenty minutes. I think you know how to do that. Ah, uh, definitely. You're a little bit of a spitfire. Hey, I gotta ask Candor Bear a question. Can I ask him a question? I mean, you're part of the stream too. I mean, do you guys mind? Okay. Hey, does this? What is it like to have seen this setup on you know like on all these streams and then see it in real life? What's that like? Was it a was it a, is what you expected, or was it a letdown? What was it? It's just weird because it's on a delay, so like <laughs> everything y'all are talking about, I'm hearing them say, and then I hear your voice say something, and then I hear it like thirty. That times. wasn't. The, he's talking about the delay now. It, you shouldn't have allowed it. Whatever. <laughs> it's you should not have allowed it. Shelving. What? <laughs> what? I was trying to help Candor understand your question. It's too late. It's all gone now. But you ruined it. Bud Barry just had a beautiful comment. That's the truth. On a nice moment. He said when Copper sang, the sun poked through. And it did. That was that was one of my highlights was uh was, was Copper's morning uh music set. And you guys played a song together and um yeah, that was that was a great morning. Great way to start that morning. I think uh anyone who missed it sucks needs to pay their <laughs> way. Uh, yeah, I will not be. Fine. I won't be missing that at all. Uh, if we get that opportunity in the future. No, I loved. Uh, I got a. I got a second that I loved Copper singing. It was an honor to play with her. I did it totally on faith because she told me she could sing. I didn't. I'd never heard her sing until, until you're we not, started to rehearse. You're not allowed to just hear Copper sing unless you're there in the moment. You've contributed. That's what. That's. <laughs> I, that's why it went the way it went. I just trusted, uh, you know, to be fully, you know, full disclosure here. Of, yeah. What were you, what were you, what are you saying? Oh, I was saying that there was a lot of running and gunning. Oh, the, well, um, well, for, for a lot of things, yeah, a lot of things in the music were just based, barely thrown together, but yeah, your set was good. Um, but a few people asked me like, Oh, because they didn't know you sang or whatever. I've heard you talk about doing karaoke on your Hanging with Bears. I, I know you like karaoke. But, you know, people were saying, oh, did you, have you heard her sing? And I'm like, no. And so I think a few people were wondering, you know, if I was crazy for just <laughs> trusting you to get up there and sing. But I, I did. Candor. Had a good, good job, Candor. <laughs> Anyway, I'm. Uh, the The point is, I was, I was. Your singing was beautiful, and Kalena called me while we were rehearsing that morning, and she got to hear you sing, and she was blown away just hearing like ten seconds of you singing when I answered the phone. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> it's not like I want to be a professional singer or whatever, but I do enjoy singing. Well, you. Um, I enjoy all forms of communication, and singing is one of those. So. For sure. Yeah, I agree. Well, and it's a lot better. It's like it's like when people write something that they're interested in. Like it's, a, it's so much more beautiful when you're singing because you enjoy it versus because it's your job. Um, I think you get a lot more sincere. I feel the same way about, about cooking. Sincere. Like, I would never want to work in a restaurant but I enjoy throwing dinner parties and making food and gifting it to yeah. people. Like yeah. I feed my, 
my work place is like fed by me. So <clears throat> if it's something that I enjoy, I don't like to sully it with like making it, uh, you have to do it all the time. Otherwise it takes the fun out of it. And I knew that from an early age. Um, my first job, I was a dishwasher and I made milkshakes or served drinks or whatever. Yeah, that's a, that's a and great, you ever get tired at work? You just like take a nap and they can't say shit to you because you're the one that feeds everybody. Uh, uh, I don't know. I just I knew at, at age 14, I knew it was like I'm never working in the restaurant industry and I never have. Yeah. Um, so. Yeah, it's definitely not the happiest place to be. Yeah. No, it's very thankless. Mm -hmm. Hard I gotta take a. And, uh, yeah. I gotta take a second. Burn Bear's been putting a lot of nice comments in. But I got to shout him out because he's been knocking out some incredible promos for the special. His, he's just been, I don't know when he sleeps, but he's been working his ass off helping promote the special. And I just really appreciate that. So, yeah, yeah. So go check out his, go check out his TikTok. It's, uh, it's, if you have TikTok, which I just recently set up. But, uh, yeah, it's cool. He's doing great. Burn Bears is trying to become more relevant again after Jacko Bass been getting all the rippings. For the last six months that's a good good observation yeah he's just trying to make a comeback i um, wish i had a pile of copper fellow racist there i just have some copper jewelry well done brain uh we got some questions in here uh for adam we kind of forgot about adam have you ever uh, he might have he might have left let's see if he, somebody said he left he might come back though uh, uh, I'm checking the I'm checking the roster. Let's yeah, see. He's not here. It's all good. Um, well, uh, go ahead and uh, go ahead and ask the questions anyway, and I'll just make up bogus answers. Yeah, he said, Adam, you ever forgotten to take the lens cap off? I would imagine. Who said that? Was that Q uh, Let me guess who that was. Was that Cucumber? No. Nope. We oh, that'd be the one. That'd be like one of his kind of jokes. No, that was that was Burn Bear. Um, That's just Sweetest thing, Candor. It's going to get me some non-stolen copper. Nice. There we go. Sarah's here. Do you guys want to hear a funny story of something that Candor Bear has in common with a handyman that I tried to hire last year? They're both in the sodomy. Oh, Jesus. Well, I'll try to make this quick. I was looking for like handymen to help me get shit done construction wise. So I was calling up these people on, on Craigslist, local Craigslist. And this guy, uh, answers the ad and he comes over to the house and he's actually a handyman that only has three years of experience. And he is a Jew and he let us know, he came and looked at all the work we wanted to do at the house and he just made sure he let us know that he was a Jewish handyman when he first got there. And I think I might have even made a little bit of a joke about that. And then Kalena, I think Kalena always gets mad when I, you know, say embarrassing things to people. But that's a, anyway. Um, so the first thing I had him do was come down here to do some work on Suite A in this building. And I was trying to show him what I wanted. He showed up in a Lexus GS300 sedan. Some people know what it is, but it's a, it's a Lexus, you know, car. And uh, he was doing all the stereotypical Jew stuff. I mean, everything I was trying to show him, like, okay, I've, I've got all this experience. I mean, I'm, he, he already knew because I, I let him know that I was a builder and all this stuff. So I was showing him in every room, okay, I want you to sand these joints down. We're going to redo the drywall. So I was giving him very specific instructions. And everything I said, he would say, well, have you thought about doing it this way? He was like doing the whole Jew, the stereotypical Jew thing. Like he wanted to debate and and argue and um, negotiate like every single little thing I was saying. So a, an hour into it, we weren't getting anywhere. And I made the mistake of bringing him down here and he saw my guitars. We had to come down here to get some tools. So I brought him to this, to this suite and he sees the guitars and he starts trying to one up me. Everything he was doing was like trying to one up me and negotiate me. And it was just so stereotypical. And this has been going on all my life. I'm starting to get all animated because it, uh, the emotions of the moment are coming back. So he starts to 
to tell me, you got to go to my YouTube channel. He saw my, he saw my weights and he was telling me, how much do you deadlift? How much do you do this? It's like, dude, like every single thing he saw that I had, he had to like, tell me he was better at it. Like his tools were better. I mean, this is, I'm not joking. So Joe, he wants me to water real quick. I don't want your heart to get. <laughs> So I, I was yelling in the in a restaurant telling Candor this story the other day, and I was having to calm myself down. But <laughs> he starts trying to t tell me. <laughs> he starts trying to tell me. He he wants me to go this this guy. So I'm trying to be nice because I want him to work for me. I, I wanted it to work out. I was trying not to fire him, but we'd had an hour of just talking and not getting any work done. But he wants me, I'm still trying to be a nice guy. He wants me to go to his YouTube channel to see him being a virtuoso on guitar. So I'm trying to humor him. So I'm typing it in and he's telling, it's some really stupid bunch of letters. His, it was some weird made up word that is YouTube channel. And he, I was typing it in correctly. I was just saying, okay, you know, I was not being a boomer at all. I am very good with my phone. And he goes, just hand me your phone. And I said, no, I just kind of briefly, quickly said no. So then I said, just tell me what it is. So he's telling me, and, and about 30 seconds later, he says, just hand me your phone. And I took a step back, and I said, dude, you, this is just not going well at all. I told you 30 seconds ago I'm not giving you my phone, and now you ask me again. I said, this is the way this whole thing has gone this whole last hour. You and I have been having you, – you've been just trying to tell me how we're going to do everything, you know. So – and he says, dude, you gotta, you got to chill. Like, why are you so angry? I said – I'm angry because you I said, he says, maybe I should just leave. And I said, yeah, how much, how much money do you want to come down here and, and do this? And uh, we settled on two hours. So it was like 50 bucks. I give him 50 bucks and he puts all his, he puts all his tools in his Lexus. And the last thing he said was have a nice life. And when he got in his car, well, well, so here comes. Dang. Uh, may you live a thousand years do you right were you like yeah you already lived a thousand years yeah here's where the whole thing comes to candor bear he shows up in my to my house to do electrical work in a lexus ls430 get the fuck out the tools so i said when i told him the story this is i said this is no diss on you i'm just gonna tell you a story jewish heritage oh he's he's a fourth jewish by the way that's I'm not making that up. <laughs> I just can't eat. <laughs> but he laughs at your jokes, I guess it's okay. <laughs> I don't know. I missed the comments. I was too busy waving my arms around. <laughs> <laughs> well, somebody needs to animate you just <laughs> <laughs> but that's, that's how it goes around here. They're either they're either potheads. I hired some, okay. I hired some people to do my tile at my house. So I'm gonna make this one really short. They show up. They come and they get. A, the, Kalena hired them without me being there. And Kalena and I have this problem where I don't want her to hire anybody without me auditioning them. She hates the way I talk to contractors, so she doesn't want me around. So it's this terrible thing. Um. But she hired, she gave these people like a four hundred dollar deposit to do the tile. Just lay our tile. We we had the materials. They were just going to lay the tile, and they wanted half the labor up front. So she gives them four hundred bucks, and it was a husband and wife team. Husband and wife team. I was just going to lay out, help the guy lay it out. It's a it's a floor that had a lot of leveling issues in it. So it took somebody with a brain that actually understood tile laying and how to lay out your job, so you didn't end up with an unlevel floor. Well, they came, they showed up stoned on weed oh, and he wasn't under, he was, <laughs> and he wasn't understanding what I was saying. Like, cause we were, it was definitely going to take at least an hour to get all of our levels. We were using boards and strings and, and six foot level and, you know, getting the whole thing. <laughs> I just saw, I just saw uh, Bowler's comment. I'm almost to the end. So we get so this guy's not understanding. This guy's not understanding like the, the basic plane. concept of of doing the layout. He kept saying, "Aren't we going to start laying tile?" And I'm like, "We don't have we don't have our levels set yet. You, you this is 
This is like tile setter 101. If you don't know your high spot and what you have to bring everything else up to, you're going to get over there and the whole thing's, the whole job's going to be wrecked. And this is like $1,400 worth of tile they're about to lay. So this was getting to be too much for him. So he had been there an hour and a half and they go to, got to go have another pot break in their truck. So I went in and Kalina, Kalina works from home. I go in, I said, they're out there getting stoned again. I said, I got to fire them. And she's like, don't, please don't fire them. They're such nice. I said, no, they, they're, they don't, they're going to totally fuck up this whole room. We can't have it. So, so she says, well, we got to, we got to let them keep the $400. I said, I don't care. Let them have the 400. They got to go. So when they got done getting stoned, I said, I'm sorry, this isn't working out. Um, we're going to maybe try to find somebody with a little more experience or something. And she came out. She had to make sure that she was there when I gave them the bad news because she was afraid I was going to go off on them like she's seen me do with other people. <clears throat> I feel like, like Joe, you treat, you treat stoners like uh, you're going around the gay club slapping dicks. <laughs> No, I don't. I'm not going to their club. They're coming to my house to work for me. You've got this all. You, you. There's something wrong with your thinking. I'm just talking about the way you treat them. You need to when, when you when you put an ad up. When you put an ad up requesting a contractor, you have to make it kind of like an online dating thing where it says no for tw four twenty. All caps. Not no. four twenty friendly. Oh. Not four twenty friendly. Yeah. I won't even. I'm not even going to talk about it anymore because people say I'm too uh, militant about it. <laughs> I haven't even, you know what, okay, I will say one more thing. I haven't even, with the stuff you guys have heard tonight, I haven't even scratched the surface of the amount of financial damage, uh, relationship damage that has occurred in my life in the last five years because of weed. It, it's maybe I just attract it to myself because I'm so like charged about it. I don't know, but it, I, I could, I could spend the next hour telling you horror stories, but I won't. I'm, start, I'm starting to worry about what's going to happen to Simone and Poppy next year. I feel like you're going to come with uh, you're going to come loaded with mint. I agree. No, I'm, just, I'm just trying to hold it all in. <laughs> uh, uh, hey, Finks, let, let's bring this full circle to the Jackobat issue. Oh, no, the Jackobat thing. Do you remember when you had him on last year and he kept drinking Bud Lights and there was like two different uh, aspects? to the stream as he kept pounding more Bud Lights. Yes. He was, it was really, it went on for like three and a half hours and I kept throwing in uh, the Costco rotisserie chicken thing like over and over and over again just to drive everybody insane. Yes. Well, did you, I actually purposely wanted to go back to that same Costco to do the uh, audience reaction to Noble Savage. Because that was kind of like a callback to my Costco chicken incident last year. Yeah, I did. This. That's just the only place you go. Is that not the case? Uh, I'm just reading your your comment to Candor. Uh, it, um, well, we ended up the best. The best audience was at Target. If anybody that hasn't seen it or whatever. We kind of struck out at, at Costco. We had a few good reactions at Costco, but nobody wanted to go on stream. But at Target, there was an underground parking garage, and people were a lot more. And I think we got better. Did we get better at asking them to go on stream? We got a little more friendly about it or something. We had a lot more people agree to go on stream. <laughs> um, I think you guys probably just need to practice doing more man on the streets. Albuquerque is a very is a very peculiar city. Yeah. Yeah. I've been there. It's, it's a very peculiar I liked the, city. I actually liked the Target crowd, and that was Kalena's idea. I was opposed to it, but she talked me into it, or I decided to try it because she kind of enlightened me. Kalena uh, changes my mind a lot, which is which is great. The Joe, uh, 
say in the second half of the stream you guys found your target audience? Who said that? That was, that was burn back. Good one, burn back. <laughs> I'm sorry, I missed the joke. That's funny. I'm, the jokes don't penetrate this. They don't really make it into my noggin with this. No, that was a good one. That was a good joke. But anyway, Here, what I was going to say about the that? target, the target people were younger and they were more hip. Candor and there were some, it's there were haunted. some good. Uh, okay, now we have some questions. But it's haunted. Now we have some questions about last night. I got to give some, some background to this because Mumsy Bear asked if I talked to my son. I talked to both my sons. Uh, probably the best reaction we got was from a couple. Uh, they really, the, the, the man really laughed at the jokes. They both laughed. Uh, and two times the man said true after some of the things that Owen said. Yep. So really out of the whole night, Kander and I agree, they were, they were the best reaction. But as we were finishing up, I recognized that the woman was the ex-girlfriend of my son, Scott. And they had been together for about three years. Uh, it was a tumultuous relationship, but they, they definitely had that, that fire of a, re you know, they really were in love with each other. Um, and I knew it was her. And I said, after they got done, we got done thanking them and everything. We were done showing them clips. I said, are you married? And everybody in the stream thought I said, are you married to this woman who's with a guy who's, you know, obviously, you know, 35 years younger than me or whatever, 30. <laughs> 25 um 3500 the the husband thought i said are you married and he says yes because he's the husband and it, she wasn't she, she's a little slow on the nickel dropping part and um so i finally just said i'm joe gagan and then it, there was still like a delayed reaction where she had to remember because we knew each other very well when when she dated my son we you know we we just were together a lot and um, so that was a very interesting coincidence. And so Mumsy was asking if I talked to my son. And I talked to him like 10 o'clock last night after we got done. And that, he was laughing about it. He thought it was really funny. And so did his brother, Sean. So, yeah, we've all talked about it. And uh, now Scott can go see it when it goes on YouTube. So it's, it's awesome. Oh, Bowler's asking what Candor's IQ is. I'm not, I, I said this last night. I didn't say I was going to do that to, for people I know. I was talking about random people. Are you married? Are you married? I'm joking. <laughs> true story. The true story. Um, no, I can't. Yes. Anyways, I I advise um, that, that you guys go do a more man on the streets until you find the sweet spot. Because there's some, I mean, Owen's previous special where he was in Albuquerque and he was talking about the the stare, the Albuquerque stare. Yes. I bet you can get some some of that. That's entertaining. Yeah. Not, not that I'd want to see that again. But yes. <laughs> I, um, I don't know. I don't. I can't remember who I said it to, but everything Albuquerque, everything Owen said about Albuquerque in 2018, <laughs> it has gotten worse. Steadily worse. Maybe I don't advise you going out on the street like that. Dan Sack, no, of course not. But that's a funny joke. Is that it, Anthony? Oh my gosh. I don't know. There's there's a certain energy that Albuquerque holds. Even New Mexico in general. Yeah. There's just it's very they say it's enchanted, but I don't think that's the word I would use. Haunted is maybe a little bit closer, but there is definitely something going on there. And <clears throat> I don't know. Utah kind of felt it was similar, but it was a little bit different. Yeah. Well, well, New Mexico has a very tumultuous history because of the conquistadores coming in and taking over the Indians, you know, 300 years before the American Americans did. Or 200, you know, 
because it was back in the 1570s that that uh, that Coronado came up. I think it was in the 1500s. Uh, so there's a lot of burial grounds. I think that a lot of New Mexico gets built over over the uh, graves of Native Americans, which depending on uh, your belief system, that has a lot of heaviness to it. Uh, and, you know, we've attracted a lot of new agey people. There's a thing called the Taos Hum. You know, Taos is the, the artist city, the city that's famous for its art, and the, the Taos Pueblo uh, north of Santa Fe. There's supposedly been this hum in Taos that people can hear all night and all day. And nobody knows where it comes from, but a lot of people swear they can feel it or hear it. And I've never heard it, but, you know, there's a, yeah. The UFO thing, I don't. I don't know. And there was a guy who came along and said that the moon landing, a lot of the moon landing was was shot in a in a big warehouse on the army base down here in Clovis or Roswell. And that President Lyndon Johnson came to visit while they were filming. They brought in a bunch of sand and, and concrete dust to make it look like the moon. They filled this whole warehouse up with it. And uh, he made the tape right before he died. It's one of the real famous um, moon um, reveals that we didn't go, and that was also here in New Mexico. So I don't know. It's, there's a lot that's happened here. Yeah, it's there's. I don't, I don't know. I can just when I went through, there was just a general. It was different for sure, and I'm in like like you know I'm in my corner of the United States. Um, <clears throat> but that one was. A, peculiar one did kind you are you familiar with the are you familiar with the tradition of burning zozobra every september no. no we burn uh going back to the 1920s it was somebody tied in with the opera there's this they make this huge puppet it's about 30 or 40 feet tall and it looks like this <clears throat> monster in white and they burn him and the whole there's a whole crowd of thousands like all of Santa Fe goes and gathers in this football field and watches and then cheers while we burn this this 40 foot puppet who's just going Aah! like you're making these horrible noises and there's, it, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, you know and I've been to that I mean, no but it's um, you're supposed to it's I don't know what tradition it's based on but you're supposed to like let all of your gloom burn with the with the puppet <laughs> Now people are telling Kander to laugh. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you pay him for. Yeah. He's not even on the clock right now. Yeah. Or maybe we maybe he was going to ask me for money after this. Um <laughs> <clears throat> Thanks. Yeah. I can't believe what you're saying about me. <laughs> Been hilarious. No. No, this has been great. When <laughs> we got candor, so now this is this all worked out great. <laughs> yeah, I'm um, I'm glad to have Joe as a host. <clears throat> I think it was a great idea to bring him on. He's been he's very entertaining. His stories are engaging. Old man stories. Yeah. Thank you. Well, I, I, I'm very, I'm very humbled by that, and I, I'm very grateful that you guys asked me to do it. I have a problem right now because, for whatever reason, Owen thinks that I'm somehow in charge of hanging with bears, and I need to send him a message and say mm -hmm. it's Stuntman. There um, really, I mean, it's there a group. I mean, he said I'm not. I don't. I don't that was in charge of it. It's. It's yeah. a decentralized. It always was decentralized. Yeah, but like yeah. nobody. Some man, be, some man is the some man holds the keys to the kingdom, and I consider him the the the, he, the jefe. You know, it, he doesn't even live in America, Joe. That's true. He's. I never, give him a lot. He's never, I give him a real hard time. I give him a hard time, yeah. but in public, but uh, behind the scenes, we're we're tight. I love that guy, and. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay he's laughing but seriously i think owen because i'm because i'm more vocal about promoting my episodes than maybe some of the 
the other hosts, and nothing wrong with how everybody does it. But I think I'm just more in Owen's um, radar on his radar because of how I do it, and so I think he thinks I'm more involved than I am. I'm just I'm not even uh, I'm still on probation, according to. What's up, man? <laughs> it's 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 always been it's always been decentralized. Um, we yeah. you know for the most part we do our own promos and we pick our own guests and nobody's telling one person how to do anything and you know stunt does the weekly promos and i mean beyond that it's it <clears throat> well in port barrett has started to oh, help out too. ports you know, ports and, kicking ass and port, yeah is, is posting them all, all like you know everybody has a, a thing there's not any one person that's in charge of it though it's like Everyone has their task and they do it it's decentralized though, which is great. I think it's it I think it's better that way than to have somebody try and tell everyone like you have to do it this way. It That's just right. keeps it really real and authentic. And if there's anything that I can tell you about because I've been live streaming a lot. Since twenty nineteen I started live streaming like daily. Wow. Um I had to I had to stop doing what I was doing but it was just for like a hobby business but I I learned a lot about live streaming and the thing that people love about it and and Owen has said it several times is is you'll get more engagement with just being authentic real and not, not having it be performative and so you know we're <laughs> we're literally just like you know, this is on a chair in um, on my patio, right. and you're right. like in the basement with Candor Bear. And, yeah, you know. <laughs> well, it's, um, it really is. I, yeah, I want to hear what Fink says about this too. It really is a totally laid back vibe that we all have together as hosts, <laughs> and I think that I think that um, laid back and the what did you call it? it, it uh, you used to, I'm, I'm blanking on a word because I'm old. Uh, just that the we're all independent. The, the fact that we're able to be independent and yet all support each other, I think that vibe, that real uh, closeness and love for each other that we have really comes through in every single episode. What do you say, Finks? Yeah, big time. Um, I, I feel it every single week. I feel like every single person that comes on was meant to, you know, and the, the conversations we have, whether it builds off something that happened that week or uh, kind of syn synchronizes with something that someone in the chat's going through. I mean, every week it helps at least one person, whether it's myself or people in the chat or the, the guests themselves. And um, <clears throat> I was kind of scrolling back through to make that uh, Noble Savage um, promo this morning. And I was trying to find that, like, campfire background that I always <laughs> And I realized that, that was two years ago that I started doing this, that the copper reached out and asked me to do this. And, and it was, it like felt like it was out of nowhere. Like I only met C copper once at a, uh, at crush fest. I may have talked to her a couple of times online, but like, we didn't have like a super strong relationship. Like we're able to now. And, um, and I just like, I was like taken back. Like it was, I was going through some weird stuff like on my own at the time. And it, she reached out to me at the perfect time. And I was like, I needed something to, distract me from what I was going through not maybe distraction is not the right word but kind of to re re uh guide my path and holy shit did it ever I mean I like get chills just talking about it right now I mean I, I, I'm more grateful for you guys this opportunity the people that we get to all associate with and call family and friends and um yeah I mean like Owen it says all the time like no one's having more fun than us and I think that that's that statement kind of gets beat around sometimes, but it's, it's more true than anything. I mean, we're all having such a great time. Like no matter what's going on outside of our community, outside of our castle walls, like we're, we're unaffected. We're bulletproof as far as, as far as that's concerned, our, our resolve and our attitude uh, remains positive. Even when we're going through shit, I mean, copper has been through some really tough stuff with her family. I mean, everybody that I've had on, they all have their testimonies of stuff that is like heart wrenching. And you're like on the brink of crying, listening to some of this stuff. And then you, you feel as they're explaining how they came out of it and how they found Owen, how they found the bears, or maybe they found out about the bears through fill in the blank bear, you know? Um, and then 
because of one conversation or one clip now they're in this place and like and i had that thought um again with the festival is like man like some i had one of my cute hearted friends send me a clip of owen like five six years ago and ever since then i was just like man this dude's hilarious i gotta find more of his stuff and then once i found him like i just couldn't part with it you know and to think that I go from laughing at a two minute clip on Instagram to now I'm surrounded by this community of people that we all have each other's back and we all love and respect each other and, and, um, and, and would, would do anything for each other at the drop of a hat. It's like, it's it, gratitude and blessings doesn't even scratch the surface of what we're all able to experience here. Yeah. yeah well, I, uh, I think that one of the, the one one of the cool things that keeps it decentralized and everyone does like what they need to do. Like, you know, we're very communicative about who we're having on, when we're having them on, you know, we all have our days or whatever. But I think the one key thing that keeps it cohesive, and this is true, this is just a fractal of hanging with bears, but it's true for the whole community is that we all trust each other. Right. Like we we have each other's backs we trust each other <clears throat> and you know i know that um stunt has I, i'm not gonna say that he hasn't stunt has done a great job of like if there's something that's that's attacking hanging with bears he's on it and he's yeah. he just handles it so well yeah. and i don't have to worry about it i'm like oh shit's going down people are you know whatever um, I know that he has that handled. I don't have to interfere with it, which is great because I just want to interview people, have great guests, have great content, um, ex you know, expose somebody that is great in the community. Um, and hopefully that helps at least one person or many, maybe many people. And um, so, <clears throat> yeah, it's, yeah, I it's um, been a crazy ride. What are we at? Almost 600? Getting close. 592. There, there are two, two people that have influenced me a lot on um, letting go of worrying about what the trolls are doing, and those are COD and Stunt. And they're both in positions where they have to be security-minded. They have to be banning people. They, you know, I'm sure it's a huge part of COD's day every day to, you know, think about who to let in the speech easy and and be managing all of this stuff going on behind the scenes that we'll never know because he just handles it but the way those guys don't get they don't get uh, sucked into the drama was was a, a huge influence on me over the last year and I'm grateful to them for sure yeah well that's a, that's another thing is that that each time we go through one of these gamma uh wars or whatever you want to call it uh spurg outs or whatever it just it it just tightens our group that much more it's like it's like winding it in a good way it's like you know it's it's just it's it's ringing out the shit you know the people that don't really belong here the way and i'm not trying to sound righteous like oh we belong and they don't but no you're it, no you, you then, get it yeah have these understandings and have these kind of frequencies that they think on um it's like we ring up every time that happens, we just ring out the ones that don't fit. And it just, as we're ringing them, it just makes us tighter and more cohesive. And um, I think after the REM job situation that I felt that more than anything, I think because of how many we lost. And again, it's not like, you know, we lost half the community, but we lost some people that used to be hosts of hanging with bears that used to, uh, you know, have be fairly well known in this community. And, and, and and on multiple occasions, not just one one or two people. I mean, we're talking, you know, I don't know what the numbers were, but but um, people that we didn't expect to see gone. It kind of was a wake up call, like you know, like not everybody in this community is what you think they are. But then after these these ringing out and these squeezes, you start seeing, okay, now these are the people that are what I thought they were, and um, I think this community get into a better place as far as that's concerned. As far as a lot of things are concerned, but that especially. Exactly. And that culminated in everybody that showed up at the festival was of a certain unity with with the group. 
everybody who everybody who sacrificed what they had to do to be there and the fact that they wanted to be there uh, it was like a whole even the difference between the first year and the second year the vibe was i mean it was incredible the first year and it it was a lot higher the second year the vibe so this can because of that England this year say that again because candor was there giggling this year that's right uh the one thing copper forgot to say though we're there is one rule and that is there will never be a black host and even a half oh. black host that's oh. what bowler was saying yeah, yeah see bowler we were, uh, that's we, not true he he didn't ask to be a host he, i know I well know. he's he was no bowler <laughs> you can't go and spout lies <laughs> he he was he was playing up the black part. I think his I black half said that yeah. we had to either accept He's a black. Just throwing bananas. So we're giving the old person. We figured the way it worked is we were going to do either a black or an old person. We figured the old person could phase out naturally. Um, oh yeah. And then once you pass on into the next realm, then Bowler can fill your seat. But I'm gonna live out. I'm, I'm gonna outlive all you fuckers. How dare. You? <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, yeah, actually the, the the opposite is probably true my my dad went <laughs> my dad went senile by 84 so i'm only i'm 20 years off of that you know my mom's senile at 85 so yeah whatever <laughs> but <laughs> okay <laughs> since i brought that up I'm doing a bunch of things. I'm doing a lot of things differently than my parents did. So I, it might be genetic, but I think I'm using my brain in a way that my dad definitely, he, he retired at 63, which is the age I am right now. And he basically, he was a very busy emergency room doctor for his career. And so he went into shutdown mode. He felt like he just wanted to go to his house and just like vegetate for the rest of his life. So he was retired 25 years before he died or close to that. And I think his lack of challenges to his brain, I think his lack of, you know, mobility activity is what made him senile and, and his diet. Uh, so I'm doing a lot of active things. So if you guys see me start to slip, you'll realize it didn't work. That's right. Kander Bear, it's the Albuquerque energy that keeps Joe going. When he came, he, there were a bunch of uh, homeless there was like a homeless camp that had just set up right up the street. He was like afraid to park his car right here by my shop. He was calling me on the phone, like crying. <clears throat> Bowler said Joe's going to tell pointless stories with no ending at all of our funerals. Hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> Kandor, did you like that one? <laughs> I wonder if Kandor likes that one. Yeah, I think he did. Focal says I have to do crossword puzzles. That would help. We should we should do the ultimate uh, burn on on uh, Bowler and get a different black to be the host. Yeah, we should get Louisiana like a real black, like Louisiana Black Bear. No, he would just do Star Trek every yeah. week. Yeah, we could or get Star Wars. Uh, or I'm sorry, Star Wars. Me. Star Wars. No, I think it's Dragon Ball Z. Oh whatever. Oh really? Okay. Yeah, wow. that's what the black. Yeah, maybe we like. should have him and sleep deprived be co-hosts for all the shit nobody cares about. Sounds like an awful. That sounds like one of the worst ideas you've had all night, Joe. <laughs> this is awkward. Uh, oh, boy. <laughs> Can Candor breaks the awkward silence with the uh, yeah. There's good. I don't. I don't know if he's laughing at me in real time or on something that comes up on the stream, on the on the chat, or if it's hearing something on the delay. As long as, long as you assume he's laughing at you, then it doesn't matter. He's he's the wind beneath my wings. Yes. <clears throat> well, um. Anyways, I'm. It's nine o'clock at my time, and. That's usually when we wind down at my house. Yep. So um, it's been a pleasure hanging out with you guys. Yeah. And I will let Joe, Joe tell some more stories. No. About, no. Um, I, I'm, 
I love you guys. And the next time that we get together, we have to have a hanging with bears picture. Yes. So I'm really disappointed that we didn't get one. And yeah. also, um, <laughs> if anybody is in the Pacific Northwest and they're listening to this, we have a couple events going on. Um, we have a cider fest this weekend on Sunday. But we, have, <laughs> we have we have another um, we have an event in Mossy Rock, Washington, which is about an hour away from Olympia or an hour and a half from Vancouver, Washington. And um, if you guys can make it, it would be great. And so um, I love all you guys. And I have um, Callista on, I think it's the 22nd. So I will see you guys um, on the 22nd. Awesome. Love you, Copper. Have a great night. Thanks love you too. On. Thanks for, Bye guys. for coming on. That was fun. Yeah, Callista, Callista was, we've had so many great hosts that have come and gone, too. Callista was so good with guests. Yeah, Callista. Robert, Robert was great. You know, always got to shout out Robert for starting this thing. Yeah, I uh, shouted him out a little bit ago. Yeah, definitely. He uh, he gets a lot of credit because this is definitely, uh, he started this thing, and uh and, I, and I'm proud of, of everybody involved for keeping it going. I mean, at that time, I mean, I'm not going to get into it, but at that time, it could have imploded. And uh, the fact that we've not only kept it going, but it's gotten uh It's been awesome. <laughs> Back up, Joe. Your face is people. I'm glad everybody – oh, I was doing uh... – I was getting way too close. To, I looked horrible on the stream last night because it was like this the whole time. Look, just looking at my, just looking at me like this. Unbelievable. Where's the, where's now the you're, people? Now you're putting the people through it again. Nice. Uh, yeah. And the, what was the other crazy thing about? Oh, so when when somebody would say no to us, I would put the camera up to my face and I would say. That guy was wearing skinny jeans or, you know, just like some kind of comment about the person. Sometimes I'd say that was a bike thief or whatever, you know. Yeah, fair. Um, so I got to watch the re replay and see. Yeah, I'm going to try and finish that tomorrow morning on my way into work. There's a lot of, there's a lot of dead dead air, but uh, you can just, like, let your mind roam during those moments. Yeah, yeah just like you normally do. <laughs> <laughs> Tool Returner says, I have some ticks from Missouri hanging on. I don't think so. <laughs> Bowler said that we looked like before and after. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody's having flashbacks from last night. Wit is having flashbacks from last night. Hilarious. Yeah. How Okay, I got kudos from Anchor Bear and from Film Grain. So all the rest of you that said we didn't do good, y'all no. can fuck off. Oh, no, fuck yourself. <laughs> no, I, it was it, it was supposed to be bad, and I mean, because it's a crapshoot. When you when you do something like that, it's the tightrope. You're just going to go out there and whatever happens. Well, and typically, <clears throat> typically the people who do these like street interviews, they they chop up their videos and they only show you the good stuff. So the fact that you guys just Running gun live is is tough. You know, it's definitely not easy. Oh, we didn't we didn't have a hard time at all. If it looked like we were struggling, it's just because we were. Uh, oh, I just yeah. mean as far as in constant like conversation, having someone constantly there to kind of talk to about what you guys are doing. It's cool with you guys, but occasionally women just cut her off left and right. Pisses me off. I don't know what that means. Uh, were we, were, I mean, yeah, we might have cut copper off a little bit. I don't know what she's saying. Uh, yeah. I don't understand that. <laughs> no. <laughs> Can you see that fellow racist comment, Finks? What's that? Joe laughed at a fart joke with no <laughs> joke. Just. <laughs> <laughs> You have to. I'm not gonna. It's. I'm not gonna give you any more info. You got to watch the stream. Yeah, yeah, for, for sure. I will. All right. I'm about. I'm about to head out of here too. Uh, this was supposed to be short, but yeah. Thanks for having us. Candor's pissed his pants probably 33 times since this started. Maybe he's in my chair. I hope it's not ruined. Oh, it's ruined. Okay. Yes. Yeah, uh, 
Jan Berlin was talking about Copper Bear. I guess she got pissed off because I interrupted her. I'm so, I apologize. Joe, I appreciate you coming on, man. I appreciate uh, yeah. I, yeah, I'm really looking forward to tomorrow. Um, that I'm still like, like you said, still buzzing from the experience that we had out there and uh, getting to kind of get it firsthand. But tomorrow night's going to be awesome. I think everybody's excited to sit back and watch it and uh, kind of see all, all the hard, what all the hard work and uh, everything that went into it, and then the product of that's going to be great. Um, hats off again to Film Grain, um, Tool Returner, uh, everybody that was involved, Anchor, I mean, Owen, Todd, all you guys. <laughs> it, was, it, was, uh, it was really awesome to hang out with you in person at the festival. It was one of the highlights to, to hang out with you and your girls, and uh, so glad they, they played. You coached them so perfect on that song. They got to play along with the stage antics and i really hope that's in the documentary obviously yeah but. i appreciate you uh appreciate you even offering that idea because they they were all about it they loved it and uh and they're obviously down to uh be involved in the future if if, if uh the opportunity arises yeah we'll we'll have to do better next year that's awesome yeah they, they, it's going to be now we've started something crazy because now if we don't have them do something every year it's going to be like a uh let down. <laughs> I don't think they'll ever be let down at, at the Bear Fest, but I, I see what you're saying. Yeah, well, no, we'll I'll, we'll keep we'll keep coming up with new uh, new bits. Yeah, for sure. Cool. Well, I love you, man, and uh, thanks for doing this. Uh, tomorrow night's going to be awesome. I'm sorry to Owen that we didn't talk about the special very much, but what the hell? Uh, we got a, we got a good first hour of the conversation, and and. If anyone understands the uh, the flow state running and gunning, I think it's Alan Benjamin. So I think we're okay. Yeah, I think if he watched it, he would uh, turn it off. But it, no, it's good. It'd be fun. It'd be really funny. All right, Joe. I love you, man. Have okay. All right. Catch up with you tomorrow. See you. See you all later. Thanks for listening and listening to Candor Bear. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Candor, thank you as well for being here, man. You uh, definitely added some great comic relief tonight. Um, Everybody else, appreciate you guys. We've had over 30 all night, so that's been awesome. Um, appreciate every single one of you guys. Go to ownbenjamin.com tomorrow night. Uh, Joe, is it 7 p.m. Eastern or Western uh, Pacific time? Uh, they're just saying 7 p.m. EST. I mean, they're seven, saying 7 p.m., but that usually means EST if it's in the U.S. Okay, cool. So, yeah, pretty sure. Don't quote me on that, but that's – yeah, nobody's asked me that, so I should have known. Right. But I, don't, I think it's EST. All right, well, everybody, it's, we'll, we'll shoot for 7 p.m. Uh, Eastern time. If it's not until Pacific time, then you can send your complaints to Joe. Uh, his, his inbox is always available for complaints. Great. Thank you so much. <laughs> you know where to find me. That's right. The Duke yeah. of LOL. <laughs> See you later. Thanks again, guys. Have a great evening. Much love.